So, do you remember Miss Pasco ran out on a lunch break to get a bunch of these styrofoam cups? There was a purpose. We already had a water incident in class. There was a reason for it. What I had wanted you to do was put your little image on the cup or any symbols that represented you and who you were. And then what I was going to do was take water and pour that water into the cup. What do each of these represent? The cup represents your physical body. Anyone want to guess what the water is? The answer is Atman. This is your spiritual self. This is your soul. This is, this is the part of you that doesn't die. Now, in the YouTube video that we watched, they discussed Brahman. Take a look at the word. Look at the spelling. Brahman. What is Brahman? Brahman is kind of like the equivalent of the superior being, the one true reality, the concept of God. It's Brahman. All right. Now, Brahman exists. And as our sheet, our handout says, um, Brahman has no form or gender. It is the universe and all of the material things that make up the universe. Okay. Now, the goal is to get reunited with Brahman. We want to escape the cycle of rebirth and be connected with that higher power, that oneness, Brahman. All right. Now, the YouTube video explained that Brahman was like the ocean. And our soul are like little water droplets sprinkled around all over the place. All water comes from that large body of water. This water right here came from a larger body of water. And because of science and evaporation and everything, at one point this water is going to go into the clouds and eventually return back to that greater body of water. That greater body of water is equivalent to Brahman, the one essential being. And we are all elements of that being. Our Atman is part of Brahman. And the goal of Hinduism is to return back to that supreme being. Let me explain. Let me break this down a little bit more. Okay? Instead of using me as an example, we have a smart priest. Okay? This is my smart priest. See, that's uh, supposed to be a light bulb. All right? Now, what's happening here? This is Atman. Spirit enters the vessel of this being who happens to be a priest, and he's really smart. But this religious um, leader was not a good person. So when he dies, does anyone have any guesses what's going to happen to him? All right. When he dies, he's dead. Dead. Gone. Ashes to ashes, right? So his physical body has left, but what has happened to his spirit? His Atman. It has not left. It continues on. And wouldn't you know it, folks? His spirit entered that of a king. Because um, Hindus understand that spiritual leaders are of a caste that's closer to heaven, makes sense, than, for example, a king. So because the priest was not a good guy, that religious leader wasn't so great, his soul then embodies a lesser, he falls lower in, the, 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 in samsara. So his body now is that of a king. Now, Leaders can be good and leaders can be bad. And let's say this king made bad choices. So he would have um, attained karma, another key word, an accumulation of good and bad deeds. If his karma, if, if he wasn't doing so well, he wasn't being a good leader, well, what happens when he dies? Well, as we know, his spirit lives on. 
There's the spirit. His body dies. And who do we have here? So we've been reincarnated, this time, into a farmer. She's a pretty little farmer. She grows her own food. She's able to sell it and make money. Uh-oh, what did she do with the money? I don't know, but she's causing... Let's just say, for the sake of this explanation, and I'm going somewhere with this, let's say she's not super great, okay? And this farmer is bad, manipulates, I don't know. Maybe she's jealous of other people. She doesn't perform her duty, which we call in Hinduism, Dharma. Your Dharma is your roles and responsibilities specific to your caste, which we'll get to, um, your place in life, and, and your stage of life, okay? So if she, instead of doing farmer things, tried to live a life that was, I don't know, more like a king or a queen, she's going to have some trouble when it comes to her next life. Oh, boy. So... She dies, her soul lives on, this is reincarnation, she's being reincarnated into, what's this? Uh, that's supposed to be a toolkit, and because we are looking at a physical laborer, a manual laborer, alright? He did some good in his life, this little guy, oh boy, but for the sake of explanation, let's say he was bad. His karmic tally, not so great. He dies. Atman continues, because we're trapped. We're trapped in the cycle of rebirth, people. And what's that cycle called? Sam Sara. So, we're trapped in this cycle. We haven't escaped it yet, which is the goal of Hinduism. Oh, now we are a cat. We're an animal. And this cat, I don't know what this cat did. But if this cat acted out of alignment with his dharma, his roles and responsibilities, well, cats also die. But at man lives on. And now we're a cool plant. And maybe this plant does a great job at living his dharma. And if that's the case, this plant would be reincarnated and keep going. Now, has the water disappeared? The water has not disappeared. Atman doesn't disappear. The spiritual self never leaves. But what's going to happen eventually is this water, it's going to evaporate and what? Go back into the sky. And eventually that water is going to make it back into the ocean. And it's going to be one with Brahman, right? That concept of the greater, higher power. And that's one of the goals of Hinduism. So... If we look on our handout and we flip our sheet to the second page, belief number four is the belief in moksha. And that is the escape from the endless cycle of rebirth. Moksha is, is the escape from samsara, this constant pouring in, pouring out, pouring in, pouring out. We just want to get back to God. We just want to be one with that entity, right? 